Almost one year ago, I finally pulled the trigger and I bought a 28mm Summicron lens. And since there's not much information about it here on YouTube, I thought maybe it's a good idea to make a video about it. And that's the video for today. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this new video. In street photography, 35mm is considered the optimal uh, focal length. And in the past, a lot of very iconic photos have been taken with a 35mm lens. I'm not 100% sure why that is, but in the past, rangefinder cameras have been very popular for this kind of application. And the frame lines in the viewfinder, usually they only went down to 35mm. And only with the introduction of the M4P and also the M5, they had 28mm frame lines. However, there was an easy way around it. You can use an external finder that you just slide into the, the cold shoe of your camera and that will give you 28mm frame lines. Even though a lot of photographers used a 35mm lens or even a 50mm, there were some photographers that also used a 28mm lens. And one photographer that got really famous was Gary Vinogrand. He mainly shot a 28mm lens and he used an external finder to frame his shots. And in case you haven't heard about Gary Vinogrand, please look him up on Google, it's totally worth it. To give you an idea where I started out, I used a DSLR, it was a crop sensor camera, and back then I used a 24mm f1.4 lens. And on a crop factor camera, it roughly uh, is around the 35mm lens, so that's where I started out. Then later, after I switched to mirrorless cameras, I used a Micro Four Thirds camera, and there my main lens was a 17 1.8, which also equals to a 35. And I also used a Fuji X100S back then. In 2015, the Leica Q came out and it sports a 28 millimeter lens. I needed some time to get used to the new focal length, uh, the wider field of view. But after a while, it wasn't a problem anymore and I knew that this would be my go-to focal length for the future. However, when I started to shoot film and I picked up the Leica film body, then I got a Voigtlander 35 1.7 and that was only because of budget reasons. Uh, I got it for a fairly good price. Yeah, and then I shot a 35mm again on my film camera. However, when I was shooting my Leica Q, I was shot a 28 and I enjoyed the 28 so much more and I was always thinking about picking up a 28mm for my film cameras, but for some reason I thought, ah, oh, no, nah, maybe I shouldn't because I have to like a cube. And why should I spend so much money on a 28 millimeter for my film cameras? But for some reason, this thought was still in my head. So yeah, that's why I finally did it. And I finally picked up a 28 millimeter last year. Now, when you shoot a fairly wide lens, like a 28 millimeter, it also means that you have to get closer to your subject, which can be a challenge for some people. It was a challenge for me in the beginning, but I got used to it very quickly and then it wasn't a problem anymore. However, a 28 millimeter also means that you will get more into your frame. And that means that you have to be really careful what you include in your frames. However, I see this as a positive because this makes you think about more about your composition. And in the end, it will help you to grow as a photographer. Now, let's talk about this puppy here. And the first thing would be the build quality. When you pick up this lens, the first thing that you will notice is that it's heavier than it looks like. It comes in at roughly 270 grams, which isn't heavy at all, but for a small lens like this, you would expect it to be even lighter. But it totally makes sense if you consider the fact that the lens is made out of metal, brass and glass. If you're familiar with Leica M lenses, then you probably know what I'm talking about. The aperture ring is very smooth to turn. First, I was a little concerned that I might accidentally bump the aperture ring, but so far this hasn't happened yet. The focus ring is also really smooth and a joy to use. The lens comes with a screw-in metal lens hood and this one is a lot smaller than the one on the predecessor to this lens. So this one came out roughly two years ago and the lens hood on the one that was on the market before 
is much larger and it's made out of plastic. So how is this all translating into using the 28mm zoom chrome lens, you might ask? Well, it has been a pleasure using this lens since I picked it up. The focus row and the markings on the lens are absolutely perfect for zone focusing and the tab makes it really easy to focus even without looking at the lens. That focusing tab was something I was really missing on my Voigtlander 35mm Ultron. But of course, the 28mm Zoomicron is not the only lens that has a focusing tab. There are many more options out there that also feature a tab. I've mentioned it before and the Zoomicron is a rather small lens, especially for a fast aperture 28mm. But because it makes use of the widest frame lines on my M6, it will block the viewfinder to some degree. Now let's talk about one thing that is probably the most important thing for a lot of you and that is the image quality. And how is the 28mm Summicron stacking up there? It's like a lens, so I wouldn't expect anything else but perfection, right? So yeah, and it's perfect. Now honestly, uh, let's see how it stacks up. And in terms of sharpness, I'm not a pixel peeper and I mostly use this lens on film cameras. But here's an example for you shot on a Leica SL. And here you can see that even at the widest aperture at f2, this lens surely delivers. Distortion is optically very well controlled, unlike a lot of modern lenses um, that have good results when it comes to distortion, but they mainly rely on software fix. So they have a profile added to them in the software and that will pretty much get rid of the distortion. That wouldn't be helpful at all if you shoot film, so I'm pretty glad that Leica did a good job here. When shooting into the sun or into very bright light sources, most lenses will lose contrast and will show some flares and ghosting. The 28mm Summicron is no exception here, but for a wide angle, the lens performs fairly good, so no complaints here either. One reason I picked this lens over one with an aperture of f2.8 is also that I shoot film and there it makes sense to have a faster lens. And also it means you can get a shallower depth of field and that's something that can add to your image. Most of the time I stop down this lens way beyond f2 and when I shoot it wide open then the bokeh looks really nice and creamy and I'm very very happy with the results here as well. The question now is, would I recommend picking up this lens and has it any value? The thing is, this lens comes in at, if you buy it brand new, over 4,000 euros, which is a lot of money and is by far the most expensive lens that I've ever bought. But is it worth the high price tag and do I regret buying it? Yes, there are much cheaper alternatives out there and I will talk about them a little bit later. However, since this is my main lens that I'm using, I wanted something without any compromise. Because if I would have bought a different lens, then I would probably still second guess my purchase and I think therefore it was the right decision. And for me, it was a business investment and that makes it a little bit easier to justify the high price tag. Luckily, there are other and more affordable options out there if you're looking for a 28 millimeter for an M mount camera. If you want a Leica lens, then I would recommend you look into the Leica Amorit 28 2.8. It's the lens I shot this year, the photos in my Zine 28. And in case you haven't checked out the Zine yet, the link will be in the description box down below. The most recent 28 millimeter Amorit is super small. And if you take off the lens hood, it does not really block the viewfinder, which is nice. And if you can live with an aperture of f2.8, this might be a good option for you. An even cheaper option might be the Minolta Rocco 28 2.8 for M mount. It's an older lens, but it's still very small. And like I said, it's a lot cheaper. Might be also a good alternative to a Leica lens. However, if you want the smallest 28 millimeter available, then I think the best option would be the Leica Sumoron, the 28. But of course, it's a very slow aperture. It has an f5.6 and I think the minimum focusing distance is one meter. So for me, this is a no-no. So when I saw this, I knew, okay, this isn't the lens for me. Like I said, if you can live with a 5.6, this might be a good option as well. And of course, Zeiss has also a 28 millimeter, the 28 millimeter 2.8 Biogon. This lens retails for roughly 1000 brand new and you can find it used for well below that. It's a 2.8. Um, if that's okay for you, this is also a good option. 
Well, if you want something faster than f2.8, there are not that many options out there. Of course, there's the Leica 28mm Sumilox. It's an f1.4, but it costs six and a half thousand or something like that. So, and yeah, it's very expensive, but for me, the biggest downside is it's fairly big and it blocks the viewfinder even more than the Sumicron. I've tried it, a friend of mine has the lens, um, the viewfinder blockage and the weight and the price tag. So for me, no, that's not an option. Now, if you want a lens that is faster than f2.8 and not as big, then there's the Voigtlander 28mm Ultron. It has an aperture of f2, pretty comparable to the Sumicron. I haven't used the lens yet, but you can find them used for around four to 500 euros, which seems like a very good deal. And if you want me to make a video and compare both maybe in the future, um, let me know and maybe I can make it happen. Now, and the last option I want to mention is the 7 Artisan 28mm 1.4. I haven't tried the lens, but it's very obvious. It's even bigger than the Leica Sumilux, uh, 1.4 and it's heavier and the viewfinder blockage must be very massive and I mean the lens is fairly cheap and I've heard that it's optically it's it's good but the size and the weight for me no a total turnoff even though it's rather cheap I think I would rather go for an f2 uh, like the Voigtlander if I want um, a lens that is more budget friendly but in case you don't mind or you want to adapt it to a mirrorless camera, then maybe that's a good option for you. All right, I will post links to the lenses that I just mentioned in the video description, as long as they are available. But that's it for today's video for the Sumicron review. If you have further questions, I'll let me know in the comments down below. And guys, as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and we will see each other very soon in the next one. Until then, Auf Wiedersehen.